Today's tip is about how to simplify work using workflow automations. We are going to do this using Slack Workflow Builder. The Slack Workflow Builder is a tool with which you can create the automations without writing even a single line of code. Let's see how to do that. You can launch Workflow Builder by selecting your workspace and the tools menu. Let's first create a simple Hello World workflow. Let's give a name, Greeting. You can now choose a way to start this workflow. It can be invoked using a shortcut menu or various other options. Let's select the shortcut. Choose a channel where you want to publish the workflow. Give a short name to display in the menu. You can add a sequence of steps to the workflow. You can send a message, send a form or any of your own customized steps. Let's select send a message. You can choose a channel or a person to whom you want to send the message. Let's choose the person who clicked greeting. Now let's create a message to send. You can also insert a variable in your message. It can be Slack defined variables such as person name, channel name as shown here or any custom variables. Let's select the person who clicked greeting. You can also include a button if you desire to move to the next step. We don't have any step further, so we don't need it. So let's keep it unchecked and save it. Let's now publish it. That's it. It is published and ready to use. Let's go and check it. Let's click this bolt icon at the bottom. It is the shortcut icon. And here you can see our greeting workflow display. When I click it, you can see that I got a welcome message. Isn't it easy? Okay. That was a simple Hello World workflow. You can also create workflows using templates. For example, you can use this template if you want to create a daily stand-up meeting thread. It starts the stand-up meeting thread every day at a scheduled time. Let's see one of the workflows with forms. I want to create a status update by the team member for the team. Let's use this template. Select channel, give a short name, and you can see that it has predefined steps. And this step has a form. Let's edit the form. Let's change this question to what will be your working house today. Let's create a list of options. Let's now save and publish it. Let's test it. You can see that it printed a message. I'm working from home today from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you go back to the workflow builder, you can see various other templates that you can use. You can also create your own workflow from scratch, export it and reuse it. If you are looking for more tips on app ideas and workflow examples, visit slack.com. You can find various tips including Slack basics, productivity, workflows, etc. Each of these examples provides step-by-step -step instructions to get started and also see it in action. Would you please let us know if you like the tip and also let us know if you want a specific tip in the comment section below. We'll be happy to do it. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Dave Norris. I'm a developer advocate at MuleSoft, and I'm gonna show you how you can get up to speed with Slack's APIs, particularly the events APIs and the web API. So what do we mean by creating bespoke experiences in Slack? Let's have a look at what I've created. 
So I'm in Slack right now and I've created a custom shortcut from the lightning icon because I thought it'd be fun to let people rate Dev Talkies tips. So you can rate the presenter and you can rate the, the demo and perhaps you can leave some feedback. Like because I didn't, haven't shown any code yet, perhaps you're less happy. And when you click submit, what it can do is it can listen for those events and post to the Dev Talkies feedback channel to summarize that for people to take action. So how did I create that experience? So obviously you need to create a Slack app, that's step one. Once you create the application, you'll get a signing secret and you'll also be able to set OAuth and permissions. So you'll need to note down your bot user OAuth token and set some scopes. So because we're writing back, we're gonna need the chat write scope. The other thing we did to create that bespoke experience is create a shortcut. So I created a shortcut here and all the events are gonna get sent to this URL. And you'll notice that I'm using Glitch. So I don't even have to deploy code if I don't want to. So in Glitch, I can use the signing secret and bot token to create a very bespoke user experience. So I'm using JavaScript here to import the Slack bulk SDK. So this is Slack's library to allow me to listen to events that are happening with my application. So when someone uses tip rating, I can create a modal dialogue. And I'm actually using this JSON string that I've included here, and it's pretty big, so I made it in a separate file. But building up this, you don't have to remember how to do this because Slack provides a block kit builder. So this is how I built up the DevTalkies tip radar screens. And you can see I can, I can drag extra things onto the right-hand side and just copy the payload to make it super easy. I can then listen for events and eventually I'm gonna listen for the submission event where I can then use the web API to post a message back into the DevTalkies channel. And again, I'm using the block UI kit to give it a specific structure. And that's it. Tip one, you wanna create bespoke user experiences, use Slack's Bolt SDK. It supports JavaScript, Python, and Java. But I thought I'd take it a step further. Wouldn't it be uh, amusing if, if I could do slash operations as well? So I've got a slash operation here where I can pass in some text and what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell me what I passed it, but it's also gonna call a third party service to convert that into ASCII art. So it's a little bit of fun, but this is, this is raising the question of perhaps more difficult code because I'm now calling out to a third party service and I might have to orchestrate and translate messages. So second tip, try using MuleSoft because I can intercept the slash command events in MuleSoft and then orchestrate and translate and route messages to the most appropriate destination using connectors. So MuleSoft has a Slack connector to allow me to send message messages. So doing this flow in JavaScript is certainly possible, but I'd end up with hundreds of lines of codes to maintain. So tip two, if you're doing anything complicated requiring callouts to third-party systems, consider using MuleSoft. And that's it. Have a great day, everyone.